Hello members of the internet and welcome to another special video. Today I'm going to be talking about old computers, obsolete computers, and Linux distributions. Now the first thing is, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and I've also went a lot on the internet and Googled a lot of stuff. And I've seen Spatry Scup of Linux seeing making overviews and you know quick looks and first looks at Linux distributions. It's kinda nice. And that's well, I kinda call this a little funny. Linux does what Win don't. But, you know, it's catchy. But I've also uh watched a video of giving life to a new computer from twit.tv and they basically based it on a Dell Latitude D500. Those ones were kind of a heat beast using a Pentium 4M and they had the 512 megs of RAM. And they were kind of impatient on it. You know, sometimes when it's an old system, they gotta probe stuff, you gotta give it time. Now, they called this an old computer. However, the line between old and obsolete, this is going to be my own opinion for that. So, some of you may be shocked, some of you may not like it, but if you disagree with me, then that's fine, but, you know, that's completely fine. You're entitled to your own opinion. So, to me, what is an old computer? Well, an old computer for me is anything that is socket 478 or LJA 775 before the Core 2 Duos. What is old to basically struggle with today's demands with uh, Microsoft Windows operating systems would be a socket 478 with a CPU that does not support hyper-threading or is below 2.8 gigahertz which basically is those older Northwoods and the Willamette cores and those systems could struggle a lot more than a Prescott system with hyper thread, uh, ha, excuse me, hyper threading, or a Northwood with hyper threading. LJ775 up would be fine. On the AMD side, socket 462 with a 2600 plus throughbred or higher, I would consider this also fairly decent. Anything older than this would be old and you know would have the struggles of running today's technology. What is obsolete is a computer that despite anything you can do, any operating system that's available in the whole world still cannot run it, that is obsolete. When you hit the obsolete point, this is what I call the museum state, which is basically you take that computer and you take out the CMOS battery if there's any or a lithium ion battery if there's any and you shelf it. You look at it and you say, this was back then, this was the old school days, and you can watch the progress go on forward. That is an obsolete PC. Obsolete PCs are just to look at. And you can start it once in a while and just you know, kick back the good old memories. There is no such thing as, it's old, it's obsolete, it's a piece of shit, let's throw it out. You don't do that. You never do that. Want to donate it? You can donate it. You can recycle it. You can do anything. Don't throw it out. If you don't want it in a museum, you can recycle it or donate it to someone who's willing to do that. You can even just sell it. People can buy that stuff. They would sell, you know, an IBM PCXD, for example. I've seen them sell around seven hundred fifty dollars. IBM PS2 computers would sell around anywhere between fifty bucks to three hundred fifty dollars, depending on their condition. Some of them are in mint condition. AT systems like Pentium processors, 486, Pentium overdrive. I can see those sell as well. I've seen motherboards. <laughs> There's been one on eBay. <laughs> a socket 4 board without anything. Just a motherboard. No cables, no nothing. 600 damn bucks. You know, there's a limit to everything too, you know. <laughs> you don't want to go too crazy either. But there's a place in those systems where it's time to hit the shelf and they collect a bit of value. I'm not going to say a ginormous amount of value like a car would do, like those old 60s vehicles or the 70s or even the 80s. 
So, today I got three computers and five distributions to test. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to at least boot them into each individual computers. Those systems are, you know, they're new-er and they're old-er. So they're old and obsolete, or museum shelf state, technically. And obsolescence for me is Pentium, Pentium 2, and the early Pentium 3s. The later Pentium 3s and some of the uh, AMD K6 can also run Monowall, which is a firewall router ser DHCP server, which is okay because it's great. It's awesome. But anything that cannot do anything of today's technology is just museum. Let's keep that in mind. So... I made a little uh, tally up here yesterday night, and uh, this is what I've been looking at and the requirements. So, first things first, it must fit on a CD, because I don't think a Pentium, or Pentium 3, or Pentium 4, well, some Pentium 4s actually, early Pentium 4s may not, but, you know, DVD-ROM drives were kind of new back then, so it must fit on the CD. It must not look complex for users. You know, an easy user interface, non-technical stuff on the desktop, like dev, SDA, whatever, you know, something that's kind of crazy. No right-click on the desktop for the menu, even though that's not kind of a big deal, because if you are going to play with those kinds of stuff, you are to expect a bit more um, advanced stuff than the usual. <laughs> And uh, it also must be i586 minimum. And I said to myself, must not be based on Ubuntu, but I kind of scratched that out when I only saw there was this much <laughs> selection. So I said, fuck this. Um, I'm going to use DVD drive only if it's worth it, but luckily I have not found any of them that was basically incapable to fit into a CD. So that's my requirement, and I did a lot of homework. And this is what's going to happen. I got five distributions to test. Colibri operating system, Tiny Core operating system, Legacy OS, OS, Vector Linux Lite, and Anti-X Linux. Colibri OS and Tiny Core operating systems, which are live CDs and you can install them, are not really user-friendly. So I kind of have to make an exception because, well, the selection was rather minimum. And what fits on the CD, I found Linux console, Bodhi Linux, Tiny Core Linux, Damn Small Linux, Colibri OS, Puppy Linux, Anti-X, Vector Linux Lite. There are other flavors of Vector Linux, but they have to fit on DVDs. What fits on DVD is, like I said, other Vector Linux, Handy Linux, LXLE, Mabuntu's, or LUbuntu. Now... Legacy system operating system that's designed to fit on older computers. I found a couple of them that's fucking bullshit. And what I mean by bullshit is for old PCs, I'm thinking about 512 megs, 256 at worst. And one of them is Puppy Linux, which is around 250 meg ISO file and needs at least 2 gigs or more. I've tried running it on a lower, way lower. Scale of memory, and it did not boot. VM Linux just say not enough memory to fit. Linux console needs PAE, physical address extension. So anything that'll need to utilize the four gigs of RAM on 32-bit systems. So, to my knowledge, this would be Prescott's and Athlon 64s. I might not be sure. Don't bet your money on that. Bodhi may not boot on 64 megs of RAM. May not. And LUbuntu's ISO file is 705 megs. So it doesn't fit on the CD. And I kind of troll myself because I said, you mad bro. Man, just troll myself on the fucking paper. <laughs> so, that's it in mind. Here are my five Linux distribution CDs. Now let's check out the three contestants that I'm going to test out.
contestant number one, a piece of shit, Pentium MMX 166, 64 megs of RAM, and I believe a Quantum Big Foot 4 gig hard drive. Equipped with a nice 52x CD-ROM drive, a DVD burner, a floppy drive, and the front bezel which basically barely holds. What a nice system. Piece of shit. Never, that was nothing more, anything but problem. PS2 mice was never detected. Eh, that's going to be a test anyways. Contestant number two. Contestant number two is a P3 933 MHz. This one has 320 megs of RAM and a 20 gig hard drive. I believe it is a Quantum Fireball. Nice little beige system. 52x CD drive. Floppy. Your power and your reset button. This was one of those programs where you would connect your home to the internet. And here, in the province of Quebec, in some areas, if you connect, if you got yourself a subscription to the internet, rather being dial-up or cable, DSL, whatever was available back then, you would get a computer. That's right, you get this little beast. But you had to do your subscription. And those were basically entry level. Um, they, this one I believe is equipped with an ASUS VIA chipset. I don't remember the model itself. And a 16 meg video card. So it was kind of kind of a step up. kind of liked it actually, uh, the way they made it back then. And of course, since it was in the 2000s, 2000, two, yeah, around in 99, 2000, this one was shipped with Windows Millennium Edition. Yeah, let's not take too much of a moment of silence here, and let's go to contestant number three. And for contestant number three, why not haul out a good old ambient Vista, Pentium 4, 2.4 gigahertz, 512 megs of RAM, and I believe a 40 gig hard drive from Maxter, the Diamond 8 uh, model, I believe. But if there is no uh, no hard drive, I will basically get it accordingly to the specifications. So, let's get things ready, and, uh, let's rock and roll. Contestant number one is ready, the Pentium MMX machine, and to the... Alright, so we're gonna try out Calibri first. Come on. Want something old? I got you something old. <laughs> they have all been tested in a virtual box machine, but I don't trust virtual machines in, because I've seen actual systems do much better than virtual machines, and it doesn't boot. Fuck you. Oh, turbo. Okay, let's try the other one. Oh. It's kind of funny to say loading disk it when it's a CD. Oh well. Well, we got one successful boot anyways. <laughs> okay, so we barely... Oh no, okay. I need a paper. My redneck mice had. That'll do. Man, I might have a redneck. Okay. Uh, and I lost my mouse. Great. Oh, that's, uh, oh, that's, oh, oh, there it is. Ooh. It's, oh, um, I know I have to be patient, but, yeah, that bar is high, 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 up high. Uh, ew, I don't think I'm going to get a lot of success with this one. It goes, then it lags out. Man, hold on, let me go get a real mice pad. Alright, real mouse pad. Uh, I think I got some input problems with this PS2 mouse. It's not the first time it did that. And I completely lost it. Where is it? Uh, can I get something with the keyboard? I don't 
think so. I think the system just... Wow. That thing is extremely unresponsive. Now bear in mind that Pentium MMX probably hits the obsolete mark. So no, I'm actually scared to start anything on this one because it probably won't run anything. I did it, like I said, in a virtual machine with 64 megs of RAM and it did it no problem, but the CPU was much better. I mean, an FX6100 versus an old Pentium MMX. Uh, hitting the turbo does anything. Mm, nope. Alright, well that's one contestant down. Uh, Anti-X, you're next. Oh, would you look at this? It doesn't even give a shit. Actually, let me test uh, the mouse. So NTX is, well, not going to boot, I wonder why, I guess my next operating system will be Vector Linux, which is probably not going to boot, so I'll just make sure my mouse is running properly though, alright, oh, yeah, it's going fine, this machine has seen, it's a it's day anyways. It has pretty high mileage, I can assume that. Very high mileage. Okay, so Vector Linux won't go. Legacy OS. Nope. The last one. Tiny Core Linux. Let's see what it'll do. Oh, come on! Not even... What? So, as for the Pentium NMX, out of the five CDs we've just tested, Colibri is the only one that actually managed to successfully boot. Was it usable? Fuck no. It was terrible. <laughs> so, unfortunately, well, uh, I was kind of expecting a bit more out of it, but because of the low memory and the, the fact that it's using very old technology, um, I was kind of scared that it actually would not perform like the others will. So this one, I will officially say it, this is what I call obsolete museum state computer. Contestant number two, the Pentium 3 933. I've checked the memory inside because I already did a pre-post out of it and it showed me it had 512, 640, yeah, 640 megs of RAM. So that was not going to be it. So unfortunately, I seem to have uh, ran out of 64 megs of PC100. So I'm just going to go ahead and use 384 megs of RAM, which is technically more or less. It's a bigger difference. It's a difference, but is it a significant difference? Well, in today's technology, I don't think so. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to once again run with Colibri. Let's see what Colibri can do. And I've checked the inside and it's it actually had the built the built month and year. March 2001. A couple months before XP got released. Well this one loads much faster. And boom! Hmm, the mouse is much more responsive. Okay, well, uh, let's hit the menu. Well, actually, let's auto config this. Oh, come on. Okay, so this one seems to be a. mostly a developer and game. Small little games. 
Uh, EOX file manager, you got a calculator. An image, tiny pad for the text stuff, KFM, I don't know what that is. Mm, what is this? No, oh, come on. CPU ID and settings. Let's go to CPU ID. Huh. Oh, let's use my Pentium 3. 0930.99. Yeah. It's got my Max SSC. That's it. The rest is no, 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 no. Press for more. Available RAM 50 out of 63 megs. What? I have 384, so I have no idea what it is. Mm, let's see what PCI device tells me. Oh yeah, that's filled with VIR, right? Alright. Well, it's a lot more uh, responsive. Right click, process, themes, background, background. Ooh. Oh, no image. Gradient, stripe pink. Ew, okay, back to blue. Uh, come on. Uh, I guess I'll. Uh, that looks purple. Oh. No, the selection of the backgrounds aren't really uh, number one, but like I said, this one is not the user friendly, uh, well, the most innovative one, anyway. Uh, Kusilia, I always wanted to play something that's completely Russian. And what the hell is this? Oh, look! I'm a little square vacuum that vacuums sand. And I have to... Wow, okay. This is so productive, I can spend hours and hours and hours and I'm fucked. What? My vacuum is stuck to the floor. Great. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Lovely. Uh, what do we get? Uh, multimedia? Oh, emulators. Oh, boy, we got a Super Nintendo emulator. Check this out. Mmm, nice. Uh, if it would work properly, it's jerky. Okay, well, this one is definitely not happening. Close. Said close. Oh, for fuck's sakes, close already. There we go. Hmm, graphics. Where's the internet? Oh, network maybe? Clients. Internet downloader. What the hell is that? <laughs> this is crazy. Download? No? Okay. Well, this thing is very, very light. Um, barely responsive. I guess uh, you'd use Calibri for, like I've mentioned, programming or maybe some kids' work. Well, my CPU is all the way high again. If you want to play some Pong. No, oh, crap. Oh, i got to move my keys. Oh look, I will, yeah, okay, well the CPU uh, really sucks at this, and, come on, oh, okay, well I'm not going to play Pong all the time, mm, yeah, so it's basic games, it's super fast to load, so, oh, maybe if you want to tinker around and have fun playing with some pipes, little games, explore the... Super fast. Oh, I get free cell. Okay, so no image. Oh, forget it. Alright, so, well, let's go Libri anyways. I'm gonna go ahead and reset the stupid thing and try out Anti X. And away we go. Mm, command line install. I'll just go ahead with that. Hmm. Looks like the little boxes are a little off center. Uh, looks like I got elves. I got elves in my systems. Mm, 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 beautiful. 
Run level S. Okay, I thought it was five. Mm. I'm not the biggest Linux savvy either. I gotta get my coffee. Uh. Oh, you got to see my face in close up. My cup of coffee. It is noon right now, so we'll keep the time. We'll uh, I'll keep a basically a close eye to the time. This will be a long video, so you gotta be patient. Hmm. MTX is really raping my CD-ROM drive. It's giving it, shit, man, it's giving it a hard time. Alright, it's 12.06, it's been sitting like this, and it's been giving my CD-ROM drive a lot of stress, so I'll, I think I'm going to be stuck in a long loading loop or something. Maybe my CD-ROM drive is on its way out, so we'll go ahead and shut her down. And give that CD drive a slack. Wow. It's actually 12.06. Alright, next up is Vector Linux. Let's see what we can do out of that. Okay, well, don't even bother with the pause. Okay. I guess you're so eager to start. Okay, uh, Vector Linux. Actually, I believe this is only the uh, installer. Alright, um, start. Yep. Yeah. Huh, I wonder why I added Vector Linux to my uh, selection. Is well, this one gives you the option of also installing the LXDE desktop. Uh, you got the JWM or the Just Window Manager, I think. Mm -hmm. Ice Window Manager and Open Box. I'll give it a medium. <clears throat> and it crapped out at 34%. Beautiful. Alright. Legacy OS, here we go. I'm not gonna bother uh, trying Vector Linux on the uh, Net Vista. I want something that's live that I can load before I can even try to install or play with it. Uh, Legacy OX is uh, a derivative of Puppy Linux. Something about those operating systems like Puppy Linux, even though I say it's bullshit, at least you can uh, save your state to, let's say, a USB thumb drive and uh, you can actually resume by loading back that uh, save file. But, it's kind of weird to make it run this way. I mean, a CD drive and a USB thumb drive, uh, I don't know. You should always use a hard drive. Or at least something that's not CD drive to load. This ain't a PlayStation, you know. Okay, well, US um, legacy blah 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 blah
may not work with Xorg, it may work with the other one. Uh, it's probing. Okay, it's gonna work. My video hardware. Um, yeah, it's as far as it goes. Um, 16. Okay for video card. Okay for video card. Maybe not okay for video card. 1280 by 1024, 24 bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll just keep it this way because the screen, I believe, only goes up to 1024 by 768. Actually, it does. That's as far as it gets. Well, I got a little X. That's a good, uh, promising result. I got the gayest arrow ever. Man, I hate that arrow. Ugh. Well, there it is. The cursor changed as well, so now we're greeted with something that looks better. Uh, I'm gonna try this again. No, you won't auto adjust. Oh, wait a minute. No, oh, it's actually the edge. Okay, no, it's fine. Uh, is it? Uh, uh, looks like I'm at the edge. Stripe manual. It won't even bother adjusting it automatically. Oh well. Let's hit the applications button and see what we got. Now remember, it's a live environment, so CD like takes a lot more time to load than the actual hard drive. This is one of the other reasons why you kind of want it on a hard drive. I mean, I'd go apeshit if I see this all the time. Huh. Games. Wow, there's a lot of games in there. Blackjack, arcade. Hmm, arcade. Super Ducks. Oh, I kind of like that game. Let's see if it'll work well. I'm not gonna start playing it because well, I got more to show. I hope. <laughs> um. Okay. How's it gonna look? It has a Windows 8 actual borders. It looks a lot like it. And uh, 0 0.1.2, oh boy, that's old. Gee whiz. Um, sometimes it runs a little bit different. Let's go full screen, see what happens. On the one screen setup, it's fine, but on a two screen setup, going full screen goes, it goes crazy. Welcome to the PlayStation. I feel like I'm playing on a PlayStation. Mm, I got around 38 frames per second, which kind of makes sense, I think. Okay. Uh, what is this? Manage my music with Amarok. Oh, nice. Opera 12. Oh crap! I don't have the internet plugged in there. What's well, uh? That was my internet. Okay, well, let's hook up the internet. I'm going to play with this. Oh, it's going crazy. Hmm. It's still loading like a madman, first of all. And looks like we are not going to get lucky with uh, the internet. Son of a gun, Opera is a big load of schmeissen. I'm going to try search with Google first before I actually uh, try the internet connection. Duck, 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 go. Hmm. Man, I hope the CD drive survives at the end. <laughs> It's been going on and on and on and on and nope. Okay, well that's it ends there. There are more applications, however, I'm not going to go there. I want to go in the applications and see what we can get. Um setup. Package manager. Wizard. Uh what's not supported and why? Broadband network. Oh well I can configure it. But I'm not going to. Install, create a floppy, duggle, enhanced CD, legacy, hard drive installer. 
Jeez, why does it look so taboo to install it on the hard drive? Uh, I guess it's because it's so small, or maybe because it's way less practical. I have no idea. But this thing looks actually pretty, uh, pretty handy. Accessories, miscellaneous, you get, okay, you get this, zip and unzip, you got arc. You even got, uh, files to DVD, you even got a CD burner program. Folders and drive, file manager, which is great, mount drives. Uh, oh boy. You can drive it with the uh, MUT, PISS drive, or PISS mount, or P mount. Eh. I'm just kidding. Um, graphics and photos, we can go to Cover Maker, Cover Artist. There's a lot of KDE programs in there. Cool. You know what? I'm actually going to probably try to install it on the. Uh, you got K Snapshot. I can actually try to install it on the um, hard drive and see how it's going to perform. Countdown timer, create a fun journal, extra journal, dial up networks, uh, explore my network, Cheops, what is this, Cheapos, with a typo, uh, network uh, scanner, internet, we got a browser, yeah, we got Conqueror and Opera 12, mm, we got MSN Messenger, ha ha ha, funny, okay, mess, yeah, that's one hell of a mess. And for those of you who don't know, MSN Messenger is defunct. It's been, what, two years? Advanced Music Manager, oh, excuse me, Amarok, Java Tunes, and Streamrunner for online radio. Audio Tool, uh, Audacity, and an MP3. What? No K-Mix? Oh well. <clears throat> DVD 9 to DVD 5 Backup Tool, K9 Copy. DVD to AVI converter. Son of a gun, that thing has a lot of potential. Wow. And it's been it's been slated for uh, old machines. This is wow. It's crazy. Mind game, card game, Solitaire, arcade, Kobo, Maelstrom, Pac-Man. Yeah, you got the Super Tux, got the Mahjong, mine. You're loaded with games too. The uh, Ice Window Manager. Yeah, yeah, it really looked like Ice Window Manager actually. Oh, you got two themes and you got the default and log out, which basically is technically this. Okay, let's right click. Right click. Oh, you got the menu. Oh. Yeah, that's one thing I don't really like is when you want to right click on the desktop and it just shows you the entire menu but at least I guess you know you got the desktop here and desktop settings anyways but like I've mentioned you gotta be taking a learning curve so I'm used with KDE I've always grown with KDE I've touched a bit of GNOME but I've grown with KDE so even myself it's a bit of a learning curve no, I'm not the Linux uh, techie here. I know my way around how to manage through Linux and get it to my main operating system from me from day to day. But you know, I'm not gonna go around super techie and stuff either. So stretch. What is it gonna do? Load and oh, oh, there we go. Oh, nice, nice sunset. I like them. There's a lot of nice wallpapers. Out of all the five of them, all five booted off. Um, so the only ones that failed to actually go somewhere was Anti X, Tiny Core, and Vector Linux. And Vector Linux, I'm going to not even bother trying it on the Net Vista because I want live and I want something to have real action instead of uh, you know going around slowly installing. That's just a time waster. I've been going around since uh, early this morning. Well, not early. Uh, at around uh, 11, it's been two hours, and I barely got anything going. So, these are the three CDs that did not go too well. They all booted, but they did not go too well. And these two, Legacy OS, which I kind of liked, and Colibri, were actually successful. 
Alright, let's wrap things up. I got a third exhibit to put on the test bench. Alright, off we go. Very quiet system. Oh, come on. You can't be for real. Oh, the only. S come on. I just. Oh, come on. Fuck's sakes. The last system is always the frickin' trouble here. Uh-oh. I can't even get it to beep. Here's the memory stick. Oh, shit. Come on. How the hell did you just die? Out of the blue, you just... No? You gave up? And if I press the power button, it turns off right away. What I don't get. I won't turn on anymore. On. There we go. Now it's on again. I think that Ned Vista's taking a plunge. Oh, man. Now well, exhibit number three is down. I'm gonna have to find myself a third exhibit. I'm gonna have to really dig stiff of uh, yeah, stuff out. Uh, maybe a Dell. Dell to save today. Piece of shit. I normally like IBM, but this one's been nothing but trouble. I think this time it finally gave up the ghost. Well, the good news is I have plenty of boards to upgrade this one. So I'm gonna get another exhibit. See if I can. Uh, Get uh, all those Linux distributions on a Panium 4. I think I just know the right one. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Dell Optiplex GX260. With this elegant beaten up feature, we can safely assume that this thing has been, yeah, kind of used uh, roughly. I have not made a video of it just yet. I wish I could have gotten over it, but unfortunately the Net Vista gave me no choice but to use it. So I'll have to cope with it. And I hope this uh, optical drive worked because I, I'm not even sure if I turned it on to be quite frank. <laughs> and so I'm gonna go ahead and get it all hooked up and yeah. And for those of you who wants to see more on this details, do not worry, there will be a video on this particular computer on its own video. So now let's get back to business. Is Dell going to save the day? Let's find out. Oh, wow, that was fast. Let me just make sure that the uh, memory is fine. Um, wow, that's even slower. It's a 2 gigahertz. <laughs> oh boy. I think we're talking about a Willamette here. Uh, oops, that's not it. Yep, 512 megs. Well, the other one was running at a 2.4. This one's running at 2. Mmm. Beautiful. Alright, well, let's get out of here. And. Oops. Oh, crap. Yeah, it's been tampered with a lot, so uh, auto. Maybe this one, make it auto too. Auto. Save change in and exit, and let's see what we can get. We get absolutely nothing. Oh boy. And away we go. Let's see if this one's going to get going. Hi.
spiny cord did not boot on the others. This one probably will. And here we are. That's tiny cord for you. Um, let's see if I can. Oh boy. I I'm gonna have to keep it this way. And no mouse. Really? Oh fuck me. Off we go with anti X. Let's see what's gonna happen. Well, 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 we have a mouse cursor pointer and it doesn't move still. Oh, brother. I think Tiny Core was actually okay. Oh, man. Oh, oh I have one icon installer. That's it. Whoop de doo. I can still get me my mouse. Let's put in a USB and see what happens. Ooh! Yeah, so Tiny Core was okay. I'm gonna try it again. But that's really all I get. Oh, it's pretty idle. NTX does not like this computer. OpenSUSE, or OpenSUSE, actually managed to install on most, if not all, systems. Except that Pentium MMX. This thing's a piece of shit anyways. I'm inclined to say those old computer things really don't make a match up to OpenSUSE. And I'm aware KDE4 is a bit on the uh, graphic intensive uh, side. But OpenSUSE still have KDE Base 3 so you can still have KDE 3 running the latest programs. Okay, so off we go. Colibri. So, Dell's been picking me up. Dell picked up the race with the slower CPU and holy shit did that thing slow. Wow, I think that Pentium MMX was actually doing better than this. Whoa. There was absolutely no warranty. Yeah, I wonder why. Floppy image. Real floppy. Do I actually have that? Oh yeah, I do. And, yeah. I've disconnected the hard drive, by the way, which is 160 gig Maxter Diamun Max Plus 9. What the hell? I hope that's the slowest part. Because this is, oh man. The system is literally very old. Oh, there you go. 86% and what the hell. Okay, so I'm going to try again Tiny Core. Now that I got the USB mouse installed, Vector can go. There you go. And Colibri, I'll try it again too. Actually, no, Colibri did not want to start. Forget it. Hmm. Alright. Here we are. Will the mouse move? Yes, it does. Sweet. Okay, so greeted with the exit. Well, that was fast. Uh, editor, control panel, apps, run program, mount tool, the terminal, the easy remaster, TC install. I think this is the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, tiny core install, and Wi Fi, which I don't have. Well, that computer definitely beeps at me. Uh, will I I'll well, actually try to get stuff on the internet. Might as well uh, hook up the. Uh... Oh, come on. There you go. 
Well, I don't think it supports my Ethernet again. Come on. Network. ETH0. The use of DHCP broadcast. Now, let's see. So my uh, the keyboard lights don't turn on. Ten one sixty five one two one point let's say seventy seven submit mass. Uh, the broadcast. Long one only two eight is one. Let's try this. Click apply like no tomorrow. Let's try it again. No. Probably not. Let's see if the terminal. What's in there? Ah, you're not. You're not root here. Switch user will give you. Uh, what is it? Tiny core. Is that it? No. Segmentation fault. What the hell? Uh, I F gun Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's. It says ETH zero, but there's not even a single ETH here. There's no Ethernet. 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 Ooh, more of those plain backgrounds and up oh, background directory. You must select the file name first. Never mind. Okay. So the apps won't really uh, work, which is uh, kind of surprising in one way. But it is very, very, very limited to what it has. I mean, this is a 50 somewhat meg. Uh, uh, ISO file, and I took the most beefiest one too. So, mm, X Visa basically is your uh, resolution setups. I'm going to quit this with Q. It's, oh, come on, Q. Okay, so the the keypad enter does not work properly. That's beautiful. drive, SR0, the bar configuration where you can bump your icon size to make it bigger and get the zoom out, which you don't want, let's say, or you can get the zoom, which is overly woohoo kind of thing, and of course you want to make it super huge, you're going to have this, ah, <laughs> oh boy, yeah, um, no. Keep that zoom down. I'm gonna keep it. Uh, let's say this way. No, actually, a little bit smaller. Yeah, a bit smaller. There you go. Okay, position button. Uh, exit editor app. Run program. That's, that's pretty much it. You can have it on the on the bottom. You can have it on the left vertical. Boom. You can have it on the right. Top left. Uh, wait. Bottom right. Let's say. Bottom right, you can have it anywhere you want. Right bottom vertical, what the hell is this? Wow, okay. Um, let's just keep it at bottom for now. <laughs> oh boy. Um, okay. Back up, restore. You can back up and restore if you want to. Date and time. Wow, that's basic. Um, easy remaster. Path source and enjoy. I'm not going to install this. And yeah, what's the editor? This has to be the simplest editor ever. There's not even help in the menu. Uh, search, search again. Oh well, find again, replace, replace again. Oh okay. Uh, insert file file. Let's see how fast you can type with this. Chicken nugget from yesterday. I am just typing randomly, by the way, so the sentence will never make sense. Now that I look at it, though, I seem to have blue lines when I type. 
Not very impressive. And if I close it, oh, at least it tells me if I want to save. That's nice. There's no sound. And so I'm gonna go ahead and make. Wow. Ooh. Hey, you think I can full screen this? Oh wow. This has got to. <laughs> This has got to be by far the biggest shutdown restart prompt I've ever seen. <laughs> what the? Okay, whatever. Let's just uh, reboot. <laughs> okay, I give up. Um, Legacy OS is the only one remaining. See what it's gonna think about. Hey, look, we're gonna get Legacy OS. The most happy full and most cheerful operating system. And one of the most detailed installation and rather crazy if you if you think about it. <coughs> Excuse me, and if you ask me too. <laughs> Oh look, it auto, auto config on. Oh come on, this has got to be fucking bullshit. Oh man, I give up. <laughs> um, applications. The only application I'm going to be running on this one is SuperTux. Because, well. Yeah. Wow, it actually does better than the Pentium 3 with this video card, and this thing's on board. I was expecting, uh, I was scared actually. Wow, this thing's actually, uh, pretty nice. I'll show the FPS and see what happens. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, even the, pl it doesn't even load like a PlayStation this time, it just goes. Wow, 100 frames per second. When do you see that on a P4? Two, two gigahertz. This is this ain't Diablo anymore. This is this is this is well, this is old, really. <laughs> okay, Mr. Ice Block, you're not gonna fuck me twice. Oh, that's nice. Um, let's try uh, Opera. You know what? I'm feeling lucky. Oh well, I'm feeling more of a gambler. But the gambling, the type that doesn't, you know, take your money. And affect your social life. And it doesn't work. Whoop -de -doo. Let's see that. Whoop. T. Do. Uh, nope. Alright. Well, I'm going to reboot because I want to take up that DVD. I mean, CD. Do, do not. Wow. Oh, you can even burn to CD if you're running as a multi-session. Thank you. Alright, I gotta wrap things up and we're gonna conclude this super mega long video because... Things didn't go well. I'm disappointed. The Pentium MMX, Vector Linux, didn't even bother. NTX, didn't even bother. Colibri, started. Tiny Core, I was expecting this thing to take it. Didn't even bother. And Legacy OS, did not even bother. It has 64 megs of RAM, I have to understand that. But Colibri, if Colibri started, Tiny Core should have too. That was a disappointment. And that piece of shit barely boots any Linux distribution anyways nowadays. It, it's an i586. And I don't know. Maybe the board's too old or system in itself is too old. It's way too freaking obsolete. It hits the it hits the museum shelf for me. That's pretty much it. It barely runs 98 properly. That quantum big flip definitely must have had some damage. I'm very pissed off, but I'm not. That's not what pisses me off. No, 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 no. 
Let's go for the pending three now. Pendium 3, Colibri started. Oh, wait, I have to mention before. Pendium MMX, Colibri started, unusable. Colibri started on the Pendium 3, usable. Tiny Core, I. Did I even try it? I don't remember. Uh, Legacy OS. Worked. Kind of liked it. It installed. I overwritten my OpenSUSE 13.1 distribution just to try it. I'm going to have to reinstall that. And it actually does work properly, believe it or not. This, you're running as root. Not a good idea. Anti-X raped my 52X CD-ROM drive. And Vector Linux was an installer. And it stalled at 34%. So I just... The CD was just garbage at the end. Now, like I said, Tiny Core, I'm not sure if I tried it or even tested it. I'm not even sure if it turned on because I don't remember it. And because I'm recording right now, and I did not, I mean, you know, I'm not looking back to see if the edit is or, you know, if it actually turned on or not. Um, I'm going to uh, verify that once I've edited the video and I will add the text right here. So, now let's get to what really pissed me off. What really pissed me off is this piece of shit. This piece of shit was working. It was working, I saw, you got the video on the, on the YouTube anyways. It was giving me shit, it was giving me free games every time I used to keep it unplugged for a couple of days and then I plug it back in and it was always like, Bleh. it was always like trying to tease me. And it still teases me because it gives me a 1331 error, which is no memory or memory error. And the son of a bitch, every time I put memory, it doesn't boot. It sits there. I've been trying memory modules like crazy. And that was, an ex that was my third exhibition. This was actually to start. I had this, you know, it, it had to start. It was a Pentium 4, 2.4, 5 to 12 megs of RAM, and it had a 40 Diamond Max Plus 8 hard drive, and I was right. So instead, I had to turn my eyes into a Dell system that I did not even make a video out of it. There's more clones I could have probably gotten, but I wanted to keep it, you know, with at least one brand in PC. And I took the Dell that was probably most fit for the job because the other ones can support Prescott CPUs so if, even if I put a 2.4 gigahertz maybe the hardware is more recent so I want something that's more related to the age and that was the only one and I did not make a video to explain how it was that's not my worries my worries is it was a Pentium 4 2.0 and it had two 512 megs of RAM so everything was fine but it was not tested it wasn't meant to be like this Anyways, that's beyond the point. I had my third exhibition, and it was a branded PC, and it worked. Rescued by Dell, thank you very much. So, Vector Linux, it's an installer. Anti-X, one icon. Legacy OS, booted fine. Tiny Core, also booted fine. Colibri, only show me, show me text. So, let's recap. Colibri successfully booted and worked properly on the on the Pentium 3, the Pentium MMX barely, the CPU uses was through the roof all the time, and of course the Dell only show show me text. This did not boot on the MMX. I'm gonna have to check out for the Pentium 3 again, and the Dell it booted. Tiny Core was okay. Legacy OS did not boot on the MMX. Worked on the Pentium 3 and the Dell. Kind of nice. At least I get something, something good out of it. Anti-X did not work on the MMX. Raped my 52X CD drive on my Pentium 3. And shown the only one icon on the Dell. And at last, Vector Linux was just an installer. Did not boot on the MMX. Stalled at 34% on the Pentium 3. And the Dell, well, like I said, it's an installer. It can't really do it. Now... Another thing that really pisses me off is those are intended for old PCs. Old PCs, my ass. 
if I can get OpenSUSE 13 point run running properly on the P3 with a GeForce 256 and KDE 4.11, why in the holy grail of shit can I, can't this run one or the other anyways? These are supposed to be made for older PCs. The MMX, I can understand. It's so old that it's, well, old. <laughs> Can't do anything. The Pentium 3, though, come on. And the Pentium 4. The Pentium 4 barely booted this. Didn't try the Vector. Legacy was okay. Tiny Core was okay. And Colibri, come on. Thinking about old PCs and what's old PCs for you. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. You tell me what's old and obsolete for you in the comments down below. That's all, that's all you got to do. Tell me what's old and obsolete for you in your opinion. And don't tell me Core 2 Duos because Core 2 Duos are far from being obsolete. They can do your daily tasks. Can they install Windows 8? I haven't tried. I have not tried. But I'm pretty sure they can. Um, do they work with technical preview? I don't know. And are you going to be using it for a daily computer? I could see that very, I can see that very well. I can see, I saw systems on sale, like it was raining Core 2 Duos, and they were on sale, like around 30 bucks, no memory, no hard drive, that's how low it is, you can get it fully loaded for 60 bucks or 70 bucks, it was raining Core 2 Duos, those things are still useful, anything that's got hyper-threading is useful, anything that's AMD is useful, kinda, um, you just gotta find its own little spot. Really, you gotta find its own little spot. Old machines can do mono wall properly. That MMX won't even bother with that. It's it doesn't even work. It doesn't even boot the mono wall CD either. Uh, but everything has its own little thing. Free NAS. Really, four gigs of RAM for free NAS because you're using ZFS. I can understand it's a very performant thing. But for crying out loud, it's just backup. I just want to put my data on there. You know? There's been this uh, free NAS bill from UXW Bill with this Pentium Pro. Was it a Pentium Pro? Yeah, the Pentium Pro with serial ATA hard drives and serial ATA controller. You know, on HP. I tried it with the MMX with a serial ATA controller and a 1.5 terabyte hard drive. Didn't even boot free NAS. Not even the 0 0.7.2, whatever version he used. That tells me that computer is very old. Well, what do I have to say? It shipped with a Pentium 120. I have to remember this. It's not an MMX stock. It's a Pentium 120. So, and as for the rest, a Pentium 4, you can use this. You can use this as a free NAS. Yes, you're not going to have the most performant thing in the world with ZFS just use a file system that doesn't really is crazy on memory either you know you're just backing up your stuff in there and as for the other ones you can use them as mono wall you can use them as multi-purpose or you can use legacy OS and give it as a guest PC one of the you know kids kids who like to go on the internet and do some crazy stuff, you know, the ones they, they come in, they, ah, uh, they, you know, they credit my PC with bloatware and stuff because they wanted to go there and they clicked a bunch of stuff and boom, legacy OS, and that's it. That's providing if the internet works. If it doesn't work, they got games. They got plenty of games. We saw they have games. So... That'll keep them occupied for a long, well, not a long time, but for a while. Let's put it this way, for a while. So, if you have any questions, comments, or anything I've overlooked, or underlooked, or not looked at, there's a couple of Linux distribution that I haven't looked at that I know. Damn small Linux, I know, I'm aware of it, but it is in a dormant state. So, dormant doesn't mean always cutting edge and as for my as for my knowledge it is dormant means no updates and the latest ver the latest version is 
is 4.11 release candidate one. Yeah, that's old. It's from 2012 too, so it's been in a dormant state for a while. And once again, you tell me what's old and obsolete. You tell me what's old and obsolete. Share your opinion, but do it constructive and keep the respect to each other. Until next time, take care.